Hey y'all and welcome to Politibrawl. My name is Brian and this GOP representative just lets John Kerry have it, calling him out for his complete hypocrisy and Kerry that really just has it coming. Let's go. Secretary Kerry, thank you so much for coming here. I hope it wasn't too problematic for your operational team and your private jet to get here. Uh, but I will start with the fact that we're prioritizing the idea of ceasing American energy and going after American energy to prioritize what we already know is an adversarial nation. And, I, and, and I'm tired of hearing no, no, this no, no, no. Actually, idea. It's Sir, I'm talking, please. Yeah. Uh, sensory strategic competition. I'm sorry. That If we're talking about strategic competition, we're talking about the fact that American economy, American industrial base, American raw material and supply chain capability and capacity, our own ability to put Americans to work, our own ability to try and drive down inflation. We're actually in a direct economic and resource and cyber warfare with China and have been for 20 plus years. It's been ignored. While China has advanced their Belt and Road Initiative, while they have expanded the Eurasian border, tried to dominate Africa, taken over Oceania, blocking off internationally recommended transit corridors for Horn of Africa, Mediterranean, Red Sea, Black Sea, Persian Gulf, so they can choke off Western Hemisphere supply chain. And meanwhile, we know that the threat that's going on with Taiwan, we know that China has continued to violate international treaties like the one country, two system framework of Hong Kong that they've exhibited. We know that Chairman Xi wants to basically go ahead and save face for his father's name that was corrupted during the Mao uh, dynasty. So my whole point is, is that if we know all these things and that they're an adversarial nation, why on earth would we try to go ahead and build them economically and not try to go ahead and try and decouple from China as we should be in an effort to go ahead and build American manufacturers and American jobs and American workers and American economy? Well, we're not, we're not, <laughs> trying to uh, build them economically, I can assure you of that. Who's their largest trade partner? Uh, let me let me just let me just finish. America. Yes, but most economists, most investors, uh, most people who have studied this issue very carefully, do not believe it is possible to totally decouple from China. It, it absolutely is, sir. And I can well, tell you that if we would utilize things like seabed harvesting for our raw materials, if we would look at the understanding of what we can do as a nation from LNG, from fracking, from our oil and gas. We're doing all those things. I can tell you the biggest thing is we're not going to get away and start having tanks that are EV that we can go ahead and plant on the battlefield our chargers for Tesla prior to us deploying into war. But I'll just finish with this. This solar emergency that we keep talking about and the preemptively directed commerce to suspend tariffs on solar imports from four Southeast Asian countries, Malaysia, Cambodia, Vietnam, and Thailand for the last two years. This is in despite of the fact that the Biden administration's own investigation found that PRC companies to be transshipping through these very countries in a sophisticated effort to evade tariffs. We have done nothing to actually try and combat that. And instead, we've actually gone ahead and increased our trade. This is a China first, America last agenda that you're pushing. I do not agree with the fact that we're not allowing more manufacturing in America to, con to, to continue and that we're not encouraging that more than trying to continue to trade with what is known not as a competitor, sir but as an adversary, and with that, I yield back. Oh boy, there's a lot to unpack here. So if, you're not, if you don't like foreign policy, this probably isn't gonna be a fun time, but you need to understand something. China had something called a century of humiliation from about 1850 to 1950. And that was when the world was basically running China. That's when Europe, the European powers were basically running the whole show. And they want payback. They want revenge because they're so arrogant to think that they're the greatest things in sliced bread. That's ultimately one of the problems with the Chinese government in a nutshell. Not just the fact that they're communists, but they're off on a slow revenge tour. And so they, have, they want to accomplish these goals on the foreign policy stage. They want to retake Taiwan because it used to be part of the Chinese empire and they want it back. It's just that simple. And Taiwan does not want to be under a communist rule because they've thrived without it. Funny about that. Hey, y'all, this is a shout out to my friends over at Colonial Metals Group, where CEO Paul Stone and his expert associates fully understand the gravity of our current situation and want to protect your wealth backed by gold, silver, and other precious metals. Folks, we are in an era of record inflation. 
We have a Congress that won't stop spending and a president who doesn't even know what planet he's on. That's how bad the situation is and that's why I'm partnering with Colonial Metals Group. And if you have a first time account with these fine upstanding people, you will receive up to $7,500 worth of silver, a nice old safe to keep all the good stuff in. You will get Roth IRA accounts for free backed by gold and silver and insurance and warranty on these items for five years, all for free. So call the number below check or check out the link in the description and let CEO Paul Stone and his expert team help you now because your wealth might evaporate before your very eyes. Protect your wealth, protect your family, protect your future with Colonial Metals Group today. Now, back to regularly scheduled programming. Because remember the uh, Hong Kong riots? They were, those people were not wanting to be under the boot and under that regime. Two, they want to control world trade again. They dominate with us when it comes to trade, but they still don't dominate the entire world. As a matter of fact, they're uh, losing a little bit uh, to parts of their parts of their near abroad, so to speak, in Southeast Asia. And they also want to make sure that they have control over shipping lanes. They are terrified of what would happen if the U.S. cuts off the Strait of Malacca. And if you notice where U.S. bases are located, they're located around three main areas. Russia, our old World War II occupations, Germany, Japan, South Korea, and all the the major waterways that can be closed off, like the Strait of Hormuz, the Red Sea. Um, oh, that, that's why the British still hold Gibraltar. They know that that's a strategic point that they must keep intact in order to keep their uh, empire going, even though they pretty much lost all of it at this point. But they're smart enough to know that they need to keep certain strategic points. And China's terrified that we are going to do something rash and cut off those choke points in the Straits of Malacca and that's in Indonesia. They're terrified that we're going to do this. I don't think we ever would, because it would be an economic suicide pact. That's why we're just slowly backing away from China. We're not rapidly doing it, it's a slow walk. It's one of the few foreign policy points that we are getting right. However, the criticism, the criticism of this is necessary because China is trying to outflank the world. They practically run uh, little sections, uh, little pockets of Africa. Why? Because they own most of the mines there for rare earth minerals. The moment we left Afghanistan, they jumped in and magically found trillions of dollars worth of these rare earth minerals in Afghanistan. So guess where they're trying to set up shop? Again, it's an attempt to outflank the Western world and control the very things that are going to move us into the future. But the last thing that this representative gets right is the solar power problem. We are just, for some reason, dead set on using renewables when we need to be looking into nuclear. I know it's expensive, I know it's a long process. I know the Vogel plant down in Georgia just finally started coming online after years and billions of dollars, but y'all, it works. It absolutely works. And, for, and there's a very weird divide on this. Men are excited about nuclear power. Women don't want that. They want, they want renewable energy. So it's very, it's just a weird dichotomy between the male brain and the female brain. And so that, that's the last little point that I wanted to make here. But this representative is giving Carrie a tongue lashing. Now Carrie deserves a little bit of backing because we are technically doing the right thing with China right now, slowly backing away. But we are going to wake up one day and realize they are going to invade Taiwan. They are trying to outflank us, and they are trying to get the world dependent upon China for their materials. That's their game. Unfortunately, we've put ourselves in a position where we need to play their game. And that's why the Make America Great Again movement and the America First movement is so hopping mad. And y'all, I don't blame you one bit. You should be mad at this because it's sort of a slap in the face. But those are the cards we're dealt with. And that's why I'm not totally uh, into Bash and Carry on this one. He has one point that he's, that he's getting right. Uh, the rest, however, definitely up for grabs. Folks, my name is Brian. Hope you enjoyed that segment here on Politibrawl. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Catch you on the next one. And until then, y'all have a good one.